chair of the Real Estate Development Advisory Committee and someone who can move his schedule around a lot. Uh, it's been my pleasure to attend any number of meetings uh, with Lisa and with uh, Lon Jacobs and various other parties, including Chris Rizzo, who's sitting here and can speak to the secret uh, findings. Uh, you know, of course, everyone knows how historical this project is, how important it is to the city, and we recognize that. But we have, as members of this board, kind of for shortened perspective, in that first and foremost, we have a duty to maintain this particular operation in this particular space. Now, of course, we're all members, we're all citizens of New York City here, and we're all citizens of New York State, so this is meant to be, should be, and hopefully will always be a cooperative venture between all the various interested parties in seeing uh, this particular campus flourish, its activities flourish, and benefit all the people in the state. So uh, I'm glad to have a small part of this. And thank you for that. Thank you, Howard. It's been a pleasure working with you. Uh, I'd like Chris to speak very briefly. That, I don't know if anyone more is warranted uh, about the secret findings, which are incorporated into uh, our, our board materials. Sure. Uh, my name is Chris Rizzo from the law firm Carter Ledger in Milburn. We're outside Environmental Council to REAC. And I'm not sure how much you'd like me to say, Howard, but as Lisa mentioned, one of the things the board is asked to act on tonight is a finding statement under the State Environmental Quality Review Act, which outlines the environmental impact statement, the impacts that are identified in it, and the mitigation measures for it. Uh, now, this statement is prepared for the contemplate, you know, with reflecting the existence of the FEIS, which, uh, which existed uh, before this was prepared which is the city's own statement. That's right. So REAC has prepared its own statement, as it's required to do, and it goes somewhat beyond what the city has done and identifying some other mitigation measures. Uh, the development agreement, which REAC is also going to be asked to approve this evening, also has some additional environmental mitigation. So between the REAC finding statement, which you have before you, and the development agreement, which you have before you, REAC has identified all the feasible mitigation measures that are out there for environmental impacts. I can address anything specific if you'd like. Uh, well, if you could touch, uh, I, I know air quality uh, is, is very important to people, uh, transportation, uh, parking impact, and noise, if you could touch on those. And the garbage. Oh, yes, the garbage. start with the easy one, which is garbage. Uh, <laughs> the Cornell's not proposing to connect to the AVAC system on Roosevelt Island, but the EIS calculated that the number of garbage trucks that would go on and off the island would be de minimis. In other words, it would be a few a week to manage the garbage produced by the Cornell project. So it was not identified as a significant impact at okay, all. Can you explain why that is? What they're going to be doing with the garbage? Sure. Well, garbage trucks can hold a surprising amount of so one or two garbage trucks can service a number of buildings. They can carry 15 or 20 tons of garbage. So when you do the calculations about how much garbage the campus will produce, it comes out to a, a very small number of garbage trucks each week. Uh, were the calculations done on baseline using the existing uh, hospital campus? It was done using the projected population of the Cornell campus. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's garbage. Um, with regard to air quality, the uh, environmental impact statement did not identify any significant impacts related to air quality in terms of air pollution from uh, truck trips or the operation of the campus, you know, the boilers. Um, now, truck traffic is, a, is an issue for other reasons because of traffic and noise. So that is an issue. Um, with regard to traffic, the environmental impact statement identified some construction and traffic impacts as part of phase two on the island during the intense period of construction, and it proposes changes to two 
sections on the island to deal with that, which it is expected to adequately do. Uh, for, the, for the audience, can you define phase one, phase two? Sure. Phase one is the first half of the project, which will start uh, as soon as this project is approved in early 2014, and will build approximately half of the space that's called for. Uh, second phase will start in, I think, 2030, and we'll build out the other half of the campus. So the EIS looks at impacts from phase one construction, then there's a big gap, then there's phase two construction. So the it looks at those impacts. Um, so as I mentioned, the, the EIS does identify some construction traffic impacts for the island and identify some mitigation measures which REAC will be asked to adopt in the CEQA finding statement. But I want to point out that that is a really conservative analysis because the EIS crunches the numbers on the trucks without discounting for any margin. And since those numbers were crunched, REAC has gotten a commitment from Cornell to using barging to the maximum extent feasible, which they expect to reduce truck trips from about 40%. And a commitment to do that is baked into the development agreement that is proposed for you tonight. So the EIS is very conservative on truck, trucking impacts. Now, the EIS also identifies noise impacts from trucking because these trucks are going to be rumbling up and down Main Street. And that's identified as a significant adverse impact. And there are no feasible measures to ameliorate that identified in the EIS. And that makes sense. What REAC has done, though, is to stipulate that truck trips will occur only between certain regular business hours, like 7, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., so that these trucks are not coming on site all, all night. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and it's your opinion that the uh, secret finding is well formulated, it's uh, within the appropriate words. Sure. The issue you know, came up the other day. It, the finding statement and the environmental impact statement, but the REAC finding statement that's before you absolutely meets the requirements of the State Environmental Quality Review Act. And I believe it, it carefully addresses the mitigation measures that are available for these impacts, along with the other deal terms which you guys are going to be asked to vote on tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to point out that uh, these uh, agreements are, does anyone who's looked at the package knows, they're exceedingly complex, and there are two elements. One, the financial element that we can understand fairly easily. The operational element is, is actually, in many ways, the most important one, because it gives us the ability to control what's happening on our main street and, and coordinate activities with other activities so that we don't have uh, sad surprises occurring from time to time. Uh, this will become increasingly important as other projects occur. Uh, some we can imagine, some we can't. So uh, I'd like to thank our negotiators and I'd like to thank uh, Don and Charlie in particular for advocating very strongly that these important controls are in place. Uh, Before we get off speaker, I want to make a really, well, what's important point to make um, from my perspective to the community. Um, to read these secret findings and to read there'll be no adverse impact here or there or whatever when you're sitting trying to get on the F train and hearing you're going to be 5,000 more people on the island, you know there's going to be an impact. There's no question about it. We can't quantify why we know some of these points are wrong, but what we're being asked to do here is to adopt this, the findings as part of this package, not to agree that everything in here is correct. And our job now is to take every piece of mitigation that's been identified and the additional mitigation and make sure that we watch this like hawks and we make sure that none of the things that, that people have agreed to do in order to mitigate the noise, the air quality, and all that, none of that falls through the cracks. And that is unfortunately the best that, that we can do on this. Uh, I just wanted to mention that there is a very detailed noise and air mitigation plan that will be part of the development agreement. So that is, you know, been covered. Uh, I think we've shared it with uh, REAC staff, and uh, that's, it's a very thorough plan. Make a brief comment. No, I'll make a long comment. I read through the 66 pages of the presentation. I said I read through the 66 pages. 
some amount of blood in these particular terms. Uh, I see that people in the community are already eyeballing funds for their own special views of what we need to spend money on, even though the money's not in our hand yet. I see that uh, a phenomenal job has been done uh, by the people doing the negotiation, and Howard has uh, called attention to many of the people involved in the process. Do the job of protecting the community uh, while enhancing the needs of the people who seek to join the community.